All right, I've got a, a special guest for you. We're looking at um, <laughs> Newton's Laws of Gravitation, topic 6.2. We're looking at uh, gravitational field strength between masses and combining their effects at once. My special guest for you today is Mr. Uh, Matthew Overland, who's going to be explaining the question and uh, working through his solution. Why, thank you, Mr. Ken. All right, so today we're looking at um, what's going to happen between these two masses here. And interestingly, when you've got a mass, two masses, you have a few points that are known as Lagrangian points. And these are the points where if you stand on them, you actually don't uh, experience the effect of gravity at all. So what happens is the Earth is pulling on this point, and it will be pulling it that way. And also the Moon will be pulling the point in this direction here. So what we end up getting is these two things at certain points, they actually cancel each other out. Interestingly, there's also a Lagrangian point over this, over this side. Um, trying to figure out why that is, that's, that's a good... Uh, Good exercise for a Friday evening if you're at home and thinking about life and physics. But what we need to do is we need to calculate the magnitude that this is being pulled in this direction and also the magnitude that we're being pulled in this direction. You can see here the Earth is a lot bigger, so its ability to pull okay, is a lot more. Uh, the Moon is much smaller, so its ability to pull is a lot more as well. So you could, you could see that the equilibrium point is going to be further along towards the Moon than it will be towards the Earth. So... And if we look at this, we know the formula, okay, Newton's gravity formula, G M1 M2 over R squared. Okay, this will calculate the force that is being exerted on the point at a distance by the Earth, and also for the Moon, the same deal, we just use exactly the same formula. What we'll do now is we'll leave G because the G's, what we'll be doing very soon is we'll be showing that these two things are the same. So anything that will be exactly the same, we don't need to put the numbers in because what they'll do is once we equate these, these will actually cancel out. So G is the same in both situations. The mass, okay, the mass might be a little bit different in this situation. So mass one is the earth here, 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And the mass of M2 is just going to be P. Alright, and then the R is the distance that P is from the Earth. So that's 3.46 times 10 to the 8. If we go on the other side now, for the Moon, fairly similarly, okay, G is the same. The mass now, it's not the mass of the Earth, it's actually the mass of the Moon. Whoa, 35. And the mass of P is, is still P. Okay, now R squared. Now the, the R value is slightly different again. So the R value is actually the distance from P to this point here. So if I know the total distance is uh, of the from the Earth to the Moon is 3.84, um, and we know it's 3.46 from here. That means that we can work out this other value for r here. So if I was to find this distance from p to the moon, okay, that will actually be this number here subtracted uh, from, or this number here subtracted from this number here, uh, which should be 0 0.38 times 10 to the 8. Now that, may I interrupt you, Mr. Sure, Overland? Sure. That is some excellent mental math there, subtracting those two numbers. I applaud you for that. Uh, should the radius be squared? Yes, actually. I was getting uh, a bit full of myself with my ama amazing mental math abilities, and these should be, be squared there. Yes, thank you very much. No problem. If we're doing um, pot energy, potential energy, of course, these would not be squared, but in this, this case, yes. Thank you very much. All right, so what we need to do at this point is here, you could actually um, calculate these, and you'd say this is a number... Um, and this is a number, and then you could show that they're equal. Um, we're just going to equate these, because I know at this point here, for there to be no gravity here, this one must be equal to that one there. So I could just say, well, okay, therefore g times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 times p, all over 3.46 times 10 to the 8 squared equals g Again, 
122 times p over 0.38 times 10 to the 8. What happens now is it's squared. Squared, man. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> All right, squared. All right, so what happens now is the g's cancel out. It's quite handy. The p's cancel out. And all we have to do now is just figure out what this number is. Okay, and when we work it through, we'll actually find that this, when we work out this calculation with our calculator, remember to square it, okay, will actually give us the same number as what this will give us in our calculator as well. Excellent. I will leave that as an exercise to the viewer. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Overland a lot for, for volunteering to jump in the middle of this question. I asked, I asked him to present this site unseen, uh, and wow, great job. Thank you. Nice. Um, interestingly, you mentioned that there's a Lagrange point on the side of the, the moon. Right, yes. right over there. Why is it? Why is that weird that there should be a Lagrange point there? Because what happens is most people just think that it's very easy to visualize this point here because you think, well, the moon is tugging from this direction. Sorry, the Earth is tugging from this direction, and the moon is tugging from this direction as well, so they cancel out. The problem is when you get to this point here, you see, well, the moon is pulling this way, and also yeah. the Earth is pulling that way as well. So well, what? So should I just get get uh, taken in, okay, by both of the values. Yeah, shouldn't it? So, oh what people forget to realize is that the Earth and the Moon, they're not stationary. They're constantly spinning. So, what happens is at this point here, in the same way that the Moon is in a constant state of freefall towards the Earth, because at every point, it's being accelerated into the, into the middle, okay, towards the Earth. At this point here, because the forces of gravity are even greater, that means that we can get further out from the central mass. So this point here, um, it is moving. It's not stationary, but also at this point, you actually experience no gravity. These are really important points um, because we can put something here like, say, a telescope, okay? And we always know that if we place it there, it'll be shielded from the moon. Uh, it'll be shielded from the moon, okay? And we also know it'll always be pointing out um, and these Lagrangian points, we're probably going to be using them a lot more in space travel in the future, because at this point here, it's very easy to traverse, because there's effectively no gravity. Well, you mentioned spinning. Let me tell you, my head's spinning a little bit. Yep. Uh, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to see uh, you guys do a little research on Lagrange points. See if you can show me mathematically how the uh, gravitational fields at that point become the uh, centripetal force how the gravitational force has become the centripetal force at that point. Um, I'd be happy for any of you guys to come and show me that math. Uh, for now, though, I'll thank Mr. Overland very much for, for being a, a good sport and jumping right in the middle. Uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, join us next video <laughs> when we look at other fantastic and fascinating physics phenomena. <laughs>